This is a practice test for solid mechanics and FEA uh, and this is question one which is really a question about torsion. Um, first of all we've got a solid shaft running at 200 rpm transmitting 250 kilowatts and a maximum torsional shear stress of 50 megapascals. It says calculate the necessary shaft diameter. So this is kind of a standard shaft sizing question uh, in um, solid mechanics. So let's just see where we stand and try and answer that. Uh, question one. And the information that we got in the question that was relevant, I'll just check that again. Uh, solid shaft running at 250 kilowatts, or transmitting 250 kilowatts, sorry, and running at 200 RPM. Um, and the maximum shear stress is 50 megapascals. And it says calculate the necessary shaft diameter. So whenever we get these questions about um, power transmitted by a shaft running at a certain RPM, it's just worth knowing that the section we're interested in in the data sheet is torsion of shafts. And I'm just going to immediately write down the equation I want first, which is power is omega t. That's a very general formula, but specifically related to the problem here. It's 2 pi times 60 times n times t. So 2 pi times n times t divided by 60. Um, and n is the speed in RPM, so N here equals 200, and we know that P equals 250 kilowatts, so that's 250 times 10 to the 3 in watts. And we can rearrange all that for T. T equals uh, 60 times 250 times 10 to the 3, all divided by 2 times pi times 200. Um, that seems fine. So I'll just put that into my calculator. And I get 11936, 11.9 uh, kilonewton meters, I'm going to say. Um, so we've got the torque now, and uh, we know a maximum shear stress, and we want to um, find the diameter of the shaft. Well, now we go back to the data sheet, and again we're still looking at torsion of shafts, and we want the standard torsion formula really. Um, typically we're going to use the first equality. These are three things all of which are equal, so you can use any pair of them if you want to, but often we end up saying um, this is a torsion problem, so therefore T over J equals tau over R. And now we need to think about what J equals, well, that's on the data sheet, J equals pi D to the 4 on 32. And since we're interested in diameters and we've got a diameter here, I'm just going to note that R equals D on 2. And therefore, rewriting all of this, I can say T divided by pi D on 4 over 32 equals tau divided by D on 2. And then I can rearrange all of that to say and you might want to do this in a few steps, it's easy to make mistakes, but I think I'm going to get d equals, d cubed equals 16t divided by pi tau. Um, so when I multiply up by d to the 4, the d cubed will be here, so it's equal to t and I have to divide through by tau, the pi will be on the bottom line, and this 32 
goes up to the top. So I think I've got that right, um, but you can check that for me if you want to. Um, I guess I'll know as well because I have a rough idea what a sensible number of a diameter is here. And that equals 16 times 11 uh, point 0.9 times 10 to the 3, that's the torque that we had here, um, divided by pi times 50 times 10 to the 6, that's the maximum shear stress here, and that equals 16 times 11.9 E3 divided by pi divided by 50, oh, I should have done 50 times 10 to the 6, so I can just divide by a million there. 1.21 times 10 to the minus 3 um, and that answer is in meters cubed but uh, for the time being let's just get to an answer in meters d equals the cube root of that which is 0 0.1066 uh, meters which is, I guess, let's call that 107 millimeters. And that is the shaft size um, that will give me this shear stress of 50 megapascals. Now we need to go back and look at the question. Uh, the second part of the question says, OK, now we've had something with uh, solid shaft. We're interested in something with a hollow shaft. Um, I'll just keep this answer from part A. Sorry, that was one part A. I'll keep that available um, because we might end up using it. Part B says we're using a hollow shaft which looks something like this and we have a outside diameter D, capital D, and an inside diameter small d d equals 2d and if we want to think about the radius there of the total system which we'll want to because it's the distance from the central axis to the maximum extent of the shaft um, then we can also note that um, r equals d which equals capital D over 2 so it's just worth having all of those things in mind um, we know that the torque is still going to stay the same um, and we can go back to the torsion formula uh, which says that T over J equals tau over R and now we need to work out a new J uh, this is again in the formula sheet sorry to keep flicking back and forth to the formula sheet but if I just find the section I want, uh, here you'll see J for a hollow shaft. And you kind of know it's for a hollow shaft. We only, in this module, deal with circular shafts. So anything in torsion is going to be about circles. And you can see that there are two diameters involved. Well, that's an inner and an outer diameter. So J equals pi d to the 4 minus d to the 4, all on 32. And remember that small d is capital D on 2. If I take that to the power of 4, I'll get capital D on 6, the capital D to the 4 on 16. Uh, just going through that step by step. d to the 4 minus d on 2 to the 4, all on 32, which equals pi d to the 4 minus d to the 4 on 16, all on 32, which equals 15. So this gives me 15 sixteenths here. So 15 pi d to the 4 divided by 16 times 32, which is 512. So that's our new j. And remember that r equals small d, but it equals capital D on 2. Um, so rearranging all of this I get that T on 15 pi D to the 4 on 5 on 2 equals tau over capital D on 2. 
substituting in for J and R and now rearranging um, this is a bit trickier I'm gonna do this in steps of getting everything to the top lines first so that will give me um, 5 1 2 T equals uh, 2 times 15 pi d to the 4 times tau divided by d so that eventually gives me d cubed and I think then that gives me d cubed and this is large d cubed equals uh, 5 1 2 5 1 2 divided by 30 I'm just gonna leave this 5 1 2 t over 30 times pi times tau um, one thing I can just check here am I getting roughly the same number well 5 1 2 over 30 is about 16 and so my answer here um, with the hollow shaft looks like it's going to give me something similar to my answer with the solid shaft and that's just kind of a nice confirmation that I'm on the right track so 512 times uh, same torque as before 11.9 times 10 to the 3 all divided by 30 times pi times 50 megapascals and then I put all of that into my calculator uh, 5, 512 times 11.9 E3 divided by 30 divided by pi divided by 56 1.29 times 10 to the minus 3 and therefore capital D equals the cube root of that which is 0 0.1089 dot 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 equals 109 millimeters so uh, just to remind you before we needed 107 millimeters diameter now with a hollow shaft we need 109 millimeters diameter that's I mean I don't know if but I've just done these questions so I may have made a mistake somewhere along the line but I do have that kind of rule of thumb in mind that um, when you have a hollow shaft it doesn't need to be very much larger at all than when you have a uh, solid shaft so that sort of seems in the believable range to me. The last part of the question, you'll sometimes see in questions like this, it'll say calculate the saving. So you have to compare the area of this shape um, using an outside diameter of 109 millimeters to the area of a solid shaft with an outside diameter of 107 millimeters. And then you'll get some reduction in area because essentially you've saved the bit that's cut out of the middle of the shaft and that reduction in area corresponds to a reduction in volume or, or probably a reduction in cost so that's why we're interested in some of these things or that's part of why we're interested but our part C here says uh, calculate the minimum shear stress in the shaft in part B while the shaft is in operation well the minimum shear stress is going to occur at uh, this point here I guess on the on the inside of the shaft right um, because the shear stress goes up as you move further and further away from the uh, central axis and that's the point on the shaft closest to the central axis so we can say tau min over r min now r min is small d on 2 which is capital D on 4 just make a note of that R min equals small d on 2 equals capital D on 4 and the R min that I'm talking about there is that length there from the central axis to the inside of the tube inside of the shaft inside of the pipe whatever uh, so the that's tau over R again we're just using the standard torsion formula I've used it twice so I haven't written it out again you can if you want to uh, tau over R equals T over J and here we know that J is the same as before is 15 pi 
d to the 4 on 5, 1, 2. Uh, what I'm interested in now is tau min, the minimum shear stress. Rearranging, I get tau min equals uh, 5, 1, 2, t over 4 times 15 times pi times d cubed. That seems...